you know, there's no way around this unless we see it for what it is and fight it. So I, I think as um, as this idea spreads that we can't trust the big systems. Another one I would like to expand on that you brought up, which was which was that the uh, playbook, the the method of operation of the authorities. Uh, apparently one of the most vulnerable places we are sociologically, psychologically, is this idea of one part of a group being pitted against another part of a group. Uh, psychologist uh, Jordan Peterson has done interviews on this talking about how we're innately, we're innately wired for what they call in-group preference, meaning that as human animals we, we tend to uh, recognize instantly when we see another uh, new person, whether we think that the, w the ways in which they seem to be similar or dissimilar from us, and, and there's an instinctive kind of a, a born in uh, preference for those that we think are like us and, and concern about those we think are unlike us. And, and in some cases, we need to overcome those instinctive reactions so that we can get along with others who are different from us and that sort of thing. And that's where uh, that's that's a beautiful part of life. But in this case, uh, the fact that we can almost be played like a player piano if the authorities say, hey, you guys who really care, uh, beware that those people are dangerous to the community is almost like a button that's almost infallible. You push that button and people will have a very strong reaction to it. And um, it's very difficult to overcome that. Any thoughts that you have on how we can proactively uh, prepare ourselves to be less vulnerable to that particular type of coercion from authorities of this, this idea of being played off against each other. Well, seeing it for what it is, is the key, you know, and then you can fight it. But of, of course, you know, the idea that um, racism and territoriality and things like that are social constructs that are unique to the modern, modern age is ridiculous. You know, we, we evolved from territorial mammals, right? Chimpanzees and wolves, they'll, they'll fight to protect their territory and they'll be incredibly suspicious of anybody who shows up who's not part of their clan. Um, because that has survival value. So of course we we still have those programs running, because we're we're barely you know out of the uh, the savanna. We're we're a very young species, and so we carry all that with us. But recognizing that we have it, you know this this problem with suspicion of people who are um, different from us, and and the ease with which we uh, that suspicion turns into hatred. You know that's all it's all real. It's all right there, and it's easily exploited if we don't understand the roots of it and aren't actively trying to control it. Um, and so I think most people are not, haven't thought it through to that point. They just reflexively dislike those who are different. And, uh, and because of that, they're incredibly easily manipulated. Well, um, you know, we need to see that because, because uh, Matt Taibbi, for instance, has done a lot of great work on this subject. He wrote a book called hate incorporated about how the, um, the big media news outlets have identified this thing we're talking about, this, uh, this ease with which we mistrust each other as a business model. So all the different big news outlets have identified one little segment of the population and they, they want to freak them out um, and uh, turn them against everybody else. And in that way, get them coming back to that news outlet. Uh, for more, because there's a crisis, you know, they, they manufacture a crisis and MSNBC does it with uh, um, hyper neurotic, overeducated liberals. Um, Fox does it with um, you know, nervous, scared, old white people. Um, and uh, CNN started out uh, trying to split the difference, but then that didn't work. So they became the anti-Trump network. They're the network for people who hate Donald Trump. Uh, and each of those is a viable business model. You can make money by taking, you know, one third of the population and then just riveting them to the screen by terrifying them. And, and uh, so the, the media is amplifying this innate problem that uh, that humans have uh, ha has have as we try to you know modernize and become part of a a, a complex global world. Um, and governments seeing that are using this to uh, to control us. And, you know, there's no way around this unless we see it for what it is and fight it. So I, I think as, um, as this idea spreads that we can't trust the big systems, 
then that necessarily leads to, okay, if they're what they're telling us is lies, why are those things lies? Oh yeah, because they're playing on our prejudices. And, uh, and we need to get our prejudice, prejudices under control un, unless we want to be controlled by these guys. So, uh, you know, there's a process by which this works. And the shrinking trust horizon is, is a, a metaphor or a, a framework for understanding that I think is really useful. Um, but we're nowhere near there yet. I, you know, the uh, mainstream media is shrinking. And a lot of the big outlets are dying and they're being replaced by a lot more um, trustworthy sources of information like your show, for instance. But uh, we've got a long way to go. I mean, uh, you know, you and I kind of feel like people are coming around. But I think part of that is just because we're, we choose to expose ourselves more to people who get it and, uh, and to not spend time with people who are just crazed because of uh, whatever they saw on CNN this week. But um, I, I think, you know, there's hope. But it's a long process of education. Another thing you just made me think of that is a proactive uh, step that people can take is to network in their local community. Speaking of that, that, that more local trust horizon is by uh, connecting on a common sense, uh, supportive, neighborly way with the local farmers, the local beekeepers, the local uh, people who are in the city council or whatever, uh, realizing that that we are we have more in common than we have a difference because one thing you you didn't exactly mention was that those in authority are are exploiting uh by by you know they, they say they want us to overcome racism yet they're they're constantly focusing on talking about race 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 it's like well i, I we've even had some very high profile celebrities and that sort of thing who have come from minority backgrounds and and risen to very high levels of achievement and income and everything saying you know if you just quit talking about it and let people do what they what they want to do to cooperate with each other, but but it's part of that as you mentioned coming down from on high is that uh, refrain of uh, trying to get us to focus on our differences rather than to see what we have in common. So that made me think about networking in local in your local community to build those relationships at a deeper multi dimensional level so that we're less susceptible so those relationships can be more resilient in the face of that kind of divisiveness. Any thoughts from you on strategies around that uh, building those local uh, community relationships? Well, that, that's really the single biggest thing we should all be doing is embedding ourselves in our communities because, you know, if, if you're all alone, uh, it doesn't matter if you've got an arsenal and a bunch of gold and silver coins, uh, you're, you're still not going to be in great shape because you're just by yourself. You can't really handle adversity. Uh, but if we are part of a community where we've got other people's backs and they've got our backs and, uh, and you know, we, we are information for each other and we're a, a source of supply of whatever that we happen to be missing and and, uh, and and we educate each other as we all you know learn about this stuff together then you know we're in way better shape um there remember game of thrones they uh, they had a saying something like i'm paraphrasing here but um when winter comes the lone wolf dies but the pack survives and you know that's uh, that's really how we should be looking at our own existence right now. We need to be part of uh, of a pack, of a community that that we can trust and that will help us if we need help. Um, and um, that's one of those things that we should have been doing all along. You know, so much of prepping is just common sense. It's the life we should have been leading um, since we were old enough to make decisions about stuff like this. And, and we're coming around to it now because it was much easier to trust the big systems and shop online and and uh, just hold dollars in bank accounts and things like that. It was, that was very easy. So we drifted away from the, uh, the, the deeper truths about existence, which is what you need to be part of a community and you need to be around people you trust and you need to be trustworthy so those people will trust you. Uh, and to the extent that people are coming back to that, it's a great thing. It's a shame that these giant crises and this potential civilizational collapse that we're looking at uh, is the thing that is taking us back there. You know, we, we probably would have been better off if we thought this through two decades ago, but better late than never.